this. So I'm familiar with some of your mm -hmm. story, but I would love for you to tell, um, tell me a little bit more about just how you came to Christ, your life before Christ, and just unpack that a little bit. Sure, sure. Well, my life before Christ was a lot different than my life today. Um, I would say they were worlds apart uh, in many ways. And so for the first 37 years of my life, um, I lived without a knowledge of Christ. Um, cursory, sure, like any American that would grow up here. I mean, I knew what we celebrated on Christmas. I kind of knew about Easter, but kind of gave that holiday over to the Easter Bunny for the most part. And so, um, you know, I just really, not only did I not really have a, a base level knowledge, but I had no idea of the richness of the story and um, and the miracle, you know, that, that came here. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, <laughs> I lived my life, um, kind of chasing after my own dreams and setting my own path, which didn't always work out. Um, for a while it did. I, you know, I had a really successful career. I had a really successful, um, podcast. I had some great friends. I had great social events. My calendar was full. Um, but there was certainly something missing. And as I got older, the, the deeper that emptiness felt, um, cavernous, you know, very. And so I just tried to fill it with other things because I kind of grew up thinking that I was the boss of my own life. And if I was in a jam or if I had troubles, I could figure my way out and I'd fix it. And I just needed to find the next thing. And so I spent a lot of my time trying to find the next thing, whether that be another rung on the corporate ladder or <clears throat> a medal from a race I would run. And it just got to be a lot, it got to be a lot. And so at this time, I was a, a divorced single mom of three and I was uh, working pretty hard, um, but it, it had just gotten to be a little bit much. And so I, I recall this one September where I just felt like just had to get away and so I booked a flight on Thursday and on Friday I was in uh, Colorado Rocky Mountains and I hiked for three days by myself you know I told my best friend where I was and she had me on light 360 <laughs> just in case <laughs> fell off the side of the mountain because <laughs> that was a definite possibility and I just like I was just looking for something I just didn't know what it was I had no idea what it was um I did hike up this one mountain, I looked out over this lake. It, it had been like a seven mile hike and there's this lake up there called Emerald Lake. And I remember like looking out and looking up and being like, I don't know if there is a God, but if there is one, like I think I might need your help or something. Like I don't, I don't, I just don't know. Like how can I keep going the way that I'm going? It's just, it's. And so anyways, I, I came back home um, and I wrote a blog about it. I'm a writer, right? So I wrote a blog about it, about hiking in the mountains and, and trying to search for something. And I'd mentioned in the blog, like, I don't, maybe I was looking for God. I don't know what I was looking for. And my friend Dave read the blog <laughs> and um, he and I had been friends for a while at work. We worked together. And so he, I think he probably saw that as his opening <laughs> to, uh, to ask me a couple questions. And um, that's really when you know, I said, I read your blog. I'd, I'd love to talk a little bit more about it. When you say that you were, you're looking for something, like what, what is that? What do you think that is? And I, I don't know. <laughs> um, just kind of opened this door to talk about kind of how I viewed life, how Dave viewed life, but most importantly, like he shared the gospel with me. And I'd mentioned this before, but I was 37 years old and this was the first time someone had ever told me the gospel. So I just, that blows my mind. Yeah. So, I mean, it, and the story was fascinating. I mean, I was on the edge of my seat. It was fascinating, but it was so overwhelming. Okay. And, and very hard for me to believe, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, coming from a place where I'd never been to church, I thought, well, this seems a lot. By the time the spring came around, this has been, what, six months since I learned about the gospel and was doing my head investigation, yeah. finding all the uh, all the loopholes and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Um, he, 
uh, I, I, I was just at a low point in life. Again, outwardly didn't look like it. It's sure. like everything was great. Inwardly, I was just like, I was just devastated and sad and empty and lonely. And I just didn't know what else to do. Like I had just kind of reached the end of the road. You know, like in my head, it's like the paved road and I'd reached the end and it's like, okay, no. Like I tried everything I could do, done everything in my own power. Um, and so he, right at that moment, um, I got a text from my friend Dave and it was a selfie. And for anybody that knows Dave Martin, I think that might be the only selfie he's ever taken <laughs> in his whole life. Um, and it was the cutest selfie and it was a, picture of him smiling, holding a Gospel City mug, and it said, um, two things I never do. Take a selfie, drink coffee. So now I'm asking you to do two things you've never done. Will you go to Good Friday and Easter Sunday services with me this weekend? And I thought, okay, sure. Why not? I'll go to church. <laughs> so it's my, it was really my first time, like, <laughs> venturing into a place where I kind of wanted to go, but I was also really scared to go, right? Um, and walking through those doors, uh, yeah, I, I consider myself a courageous person, but I was a little bit nervous. Like, <laughs> I was like, what do I wear? What do I wear? What do people wear to church? What have I seen in movies? Okay, <laughs> think, think, think. I'm looking through my closet and I'm like, oh, this dress is perfect pink, purple flowers, floral, it's tasteful, you know, no low <laughs> neckline, like this is going to be about the perfect all. dress for church. <laughs> and I show up to Good Friday and it's a funeral, literally, and everyone's wearing black. It's dark. And I remember looking at him and thinking, you couldn't have told me. Like, when did just you tell a you little missed bit, it? like, hey girl, maybe wear black today. But. That's not the important part. The important part was the message that day. Like, it was just so heavy. I was just blown away. Like, I was blown away by the depth of it and by the sadness of it. And, like, it, 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 it stayed with me, I guess is the best way to put it. <clears throat> so then I lived up to my promise and I came back on Sunday. <laughs> Dressed in black, because that's what people wear <laughs> in church. <laughs> time to tell black. I was ready to go, and I came into a celebration <laughs> with confetti shot out of a cannon. So it was like, I don't know. Like, if you could have, like, a, I was looking for, like, a nondiscreet entrance, and it was, like, the exact opposite. <laughs> welcome to church. It was, yeah, welcome to church. Um, but by the time I left Easter Sunday, I was like, I was like pumped. I was jazzed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to mention, because um, it's important to me, that I wasn't following Dave. And he specifically said, like, I can't ever be your savior. Like, there's only one savior. And so here's this book. Here's this Bible. Um, your savior's in there. So. Get your nose in. He wrote in the, he wrote in the opening of my Bible. Get your nose in this thing, and and read this incredible story. And so I did. Like I just jumped in, and the words just flew off the page. Right. And it was like I remember I would put my kids to bed every night, and I would start reading my Bible. And on May sixth, twenty nineteen, I was sitting on my couch and still going to kind of through some tumultuous times and I was reading about I think it's in Luke uh, where you know the man builds his house on sand and the winds come and the rain comes and you know crumbles but if you build your house on the rock the winds come the storms come and you know you're protected you're safe and I just thought there it is <laughs> I've been building my house on sand for 37 years no wonder it's crumbling and I want to build my house on you, Jesus. Like, I want I want you to be my foundation. I can no longer do this. Like, all the running, all the all the everything, I'm tired. I just can't, I just can't do it anymore on my own. Um, take it. Like, Jesus, just please take it. And it was just a very um, emotional moment and one of those, like, that moments. 
felt this like wave of peace and warmth and like almost as if my shoulders were like, <sighs> okay. My life before Jesus, I was a very different person than I am now. Um, not in every way, but in the most important ways. And so people would often ask because again, I'm coming from a whole community of non-believers. So they were watching me and going like, what is going on with this girl? Um, and I would, people would say like, well, how has your life changed? And it was such an overwhelming question and it felt so silly, but the only thing I could say was everything, everything changes. Like, I don't know something that hasn't changed. Like the way I parent my children changes, the way I go about my day changes, the way I think about my value changes, the way I think about my future changes. Like literally everything changes. I can sleep at night. Like, so that's my story. <laughs>